Raise your hand if you've ever been afraid to ask for help. Maybe you're afraid to even raise your hand. Is it the fear of rejection or judgment or not knowing what to say? I want everybody to picture the professional world as a party and mentorship is the VIP space that people eye but are afraid to access. It's where the elite people hang out. They share secret tips and they help others avoid the pitfalls they fell into years prior. Are you worried that you're standing on the wrong side of the velvet rope, living the rest of your life on the outskirts? So, how do you actually get access to this coveted space? I'm here today to unclip the velvet rope and guide you into the VIP space we call mentorship. Because we're living in a challenging world and mentorship could be that guiding light to help you navigate through the darkest of times. It's funny to think about the person you were back then versus the person you are today. I look at myself in the mirror and honestly, I don't recognize the reflection. The person I was back then was timid, had very little ambition, and had goals so small, he was able to achieve them in that same day. It's safe to say that I was not maximizing my potential. Fast forward to today, and I am someone who is hyper ambitious, someone who is driven by passion and impact, and someone who has goals so big they scare the crap out of me, like standing on this giant red dot on stage here. You see, with mentorship and looking at yourself from before and after, you need to be mindful of who you're spending your time with, both friends and mentors. My new group that I surround myself with focuses on saying, imagine if, rather than remember when. Because imagine if is all about growth for the future. Remember when is all about reminiscing on the glory days of high school and college in the past. This all started when I founded the Final Round Career Platform, where I interview company recruiters to help job seekers advance past the Final Round interview. And I've been on a mission to help young professionals achieve the best version of themselves, both personally and professionally. And through countless hours of interviews and research and speaking and content creation, I've learned that life is a lot like a boxing match, but your career is on the line. And what you don't realize is that every single person, whether you're an athlete or just an average person, has a team in their corner. You could be the smallest boxer or you could be Floyd Mayweather. They always have a team. So I ask you, who is on your team and who is in your corner? And if nobody instantly comes to mind, it might be time to start building your team because even the most successful people in the world have a team of mentors around them. We can look at two industry moguls as examples. We have Susan Wojcicki, the former uh, CEO of YouTube, and we have Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. These, mo these moguls have publicly stated that if it wasn't for their mentors, they would not be where they are today. We all love to believe in self-made stories, right? They're the best, but they're often a sham because there is always at least one person who helped guide them to where they wanna go. Let's face it, we live in chaotic post-pandemic times where virtual is the new reality and mental health is a priority. Trust me, I would know. I am Gen Z. I was part of the first college class to graduate during a global pandemic. You can see me on stage here graduating with no friends because I was by myself, graduated virtually on Zoom, which by the way, don't recommend, it was not great. <laughs> and. I started my job virtually, never stepped foot into a physical office. I was never even able to say bye to my friends on campus. But during those darkest of days, when we all remember we were locked at home, I started connecting with people online. And what I didn't realize at the time was that mentorship turned out to be my lifeline. And it could be yours too. You see, networking has never been easier than it is today because we're all one follow, one click, or one DM away. So let's dive deeper into how mentorship isn't just a nice to have, but how it could be a compass to help you navigate these treacherous waters we call life. Of course, there's different ways to go about mentorship. So I recommend using the 33-33-33 framework, something that I learned from, ironically, 
one of my mentors. As we're assembling your dream team, it's going to be in that boxing corner for your life. The first third should be those older than you and more experienced than you. You could say that they've been around the block. They've often paved the path that you're about to go down. They can help you avoid the pitfalls that you may fall into. They could be teachers, managers, even parents. This next third is those that you're in the trenches with. They're your squad. You celebrate the wins, you combat the losses, and they could be friends, classmates, coworkers, fellow analysts or associates. And the last third often doesn't get talked about, but it's your mentees, because your mentees have an equal importance compared to your mentors, and they teach you how to give back and have a different perspective on life. And some qualities you should look for in the best mentors. They're there to inspire you, to motivate you, to give you honest and constructive criticism and feedback. They always throw your hat in the ring for the best opportunities. And most importantly, they believe in you more than you believe in yourself. So now that we spoke about who should be on your team, how do you actually go about building your team? And I created this great acronym that I use all the time because it talks about my life. And the answer to that question is three letters. A, B, N. Always be networking. You never know who you're going to meet, but so many of us are so lost in our own circle of friends that we fail to branch out. Some of my best mentors have been ones that I've met at soccer stadiums, at the airport, in line waiting for a cappuccino at Starbucks, maybe even sitting next to a new coworker or a classmate, whether you're at work or in school. You see, when you're always networking, you're opening yourself up like a butterfly, and you're always continuing to grow. So ask yourself, how could you challenge yourself on a daily basis to continue to meet new people? What I do for myself, because I get it, it's scary, it's not easy talking to new people, I treat it as a personal game of dare with myself, and I always try to meet new people. It's funny. People often say, AJ, you get so lucky. But the cheat code that they don't realize is that you can just put yourself in a position to get lucky. I've seen a positive correlation to the amount of times I throw my hat in the ring and the number of people I meet directly leads to more opportunities and more mentors that come my way. And I get it. You're probably saying, oh, well, AJ, I'm not someone who's lucky. Okay. So drive to Home Depot, buy a hammer and some wood, and create your own doors of opportunity. Because if nobody is knocking, and trust me, there was nobody knocking on my door early on in my career. So I went out and built my own door and created my own opportunity. Because the best opportunity in life is not the one that exists. It's the one you create. And trust me, it's the most fulfilling. So let's give some examples, right? When I was studying at USC, I wanted to get into some of the top student organizations on campus, only to be reje rejected by literally every single one of them. And maybe it was my low GPA, or maybe it was that I was a community college transfer, but it didn't matter because I started my own organization, grew it to the largest on campus, and we had the most impact. Or maybe it was when I wanted to get featured on a top business, or business publication, like Forbes or Fast Company, only to be ghosted by every single person I emailed. So I went to an event, met the staff editor, cold pitched this person, and became one of the youngest writers for Fast Company in the world. Or maybe it's having a dream of speaking at a TED Talk, only to get rejected by so many TED Talks around the world, and that's not a joke. <laughs> but I found a mentor on LinkedIn, asked for some advice, because she previously spoke at a TED Talk, got real and honest guidance on how to do it right, and here I am standing on this coveted red carpet. There's two mentalities in life. You can either, either apply to a job that exists, or you can cold email pitch the CEO of a startup, do your research, and create an opportunity that didn't exist prior. It's this mentality shift that gets you to the next dimension of your life and your career. When you start thinking like this, there's all these new opportunities that come about. So how can you go and build your own opportunity? You see, asking for help is not a weakness. It's a brave step towards growth. Winston Churchill, the UK Prime Minister during World War II, brilliantly said, you make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give. We're talking a lot about mentorship and finding a mentor, but it's equally as important to be a mentor to somebody else. 
Imagine a world where every single one of us strive to be a mentor for somebody. Just imagine the ripple effect that would have on humanity. Now join me beyond the velvet rope to discover the magic of mentorship, because the time to start building your team is now. Thank you.